The year is 2017, and I was studying computer science here at the University of Nottingham. Coming into my final year of study, I knew I wanted to make something cool for my full year dissertation. Something that wasn't just software. So I figured I'd build a drone from scratch. But I couldn't just do that and call it a day. No, I had to integrate it into my degree. And to do that, I sprinkled in some fancy robotics and computer vision. The goal had transformed into creating a drone that can fly through indoor spaces, then map them in full 3D. Being a student, I was broke, so I needed to do all of this on the cheap. Enter the Raspberry Pi Zero, a £5 computer. Paired with the now discontinued PXF Mini from Early Robotics, this gave me a pretty decent Linux flight controller for under £100. But if I were to do this again, well, I'd go for something like a Pixel, which is still very well supported. After a huge order from Hobby King, I was ready to get building. With the Pi being a Linux board, this meant I needed a nice system image which also included a flight controller stack. I went with using RGPilot. This software handles control of all the motors on the drone, as well as handling incoming sensor data like the compass and accelerometer, which is used to figure out the position of the drone whilst it's in the air. I didn't want to rely on the OS image that came with the PXF Mini, so I reverse engineered it and created my own. While digging, I found a copy of Minecraft. Like, why would you install a game on a drone? Anyway, don't tell Early Robotics' legal team. The Linux kernel needed to be patched to be a real-time OS. This is so it can handle certain hardware events as soon as they arrive, which is needed for flight to be stable. Next, RGPilot needed to be set up so it starts automatically on boot. Then, I added in a wireless hotspot to talk to IGPilot over Wi-Fi from a ground station PC, and I configured video streaming over the hotspot. My drone is supposed to fly indoors, which means that GPS is useless when it comes to positioning. There's some alternate approaches which you can use to get around this, like using fixed Bluetooth beacons at set locations, which you could then use to triangulate the drone's position. But I didn't like this, because it meant a lot of extra setup when you fly in new locations. So instead, I use something called visual odometry. The idea behind that is fairly simple. Your software watches a camera feed and tracks distinguishing features over time to figure out your current position relative to the real world. Initially, I wanted to run that on the Pi, but it's nowhere near powerful enough to handle it. That lack of power? It was a problem. But it wasn't impossible to solve. You see, I was already streaming video to my ground station PC over Wi-Fi, and that PC, well, it has a lot more processing power to it. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Now, the actual process of building software that can handle visual odometry is a tall order. So instead, I used existing work named Orbslam 2. This software handles both dual and single camera feeds pretty well. A downside though is that in a single camera setup like mine, your position doesn't nicely map to real world units. I built a calibration phase to convert these positions by moving the camera a fixed distance manually, then recording the observed output. My final positioning setup worked by sending fake GPS coordinates to the drone, 
which then mapped to Orbstam's view of the world. Now that positioning was under some semblance of control, I turned to have a look at how to map indoor spaces in 3D. My idea was to use something called photogrammetry. If you've ever used an app on your phone to 3D scan something, it's the same underlying principle. You take a buttload of overlapping photos of what you want to scan and end up with a textured 3D model at the end. What's super cool is that this is how companies like Google create 3D maps from satellite images. I combined two open source projects for my photogrammetry pipeline, Colmap for point clouds and OpenMVS to convert those clouds into 3D objects. Both of these are really freaking clever. The pipeline starts with passing input photos to Colmap, which converts them into a point cloud using a technique named structure from motion. This works by finding distinct features that are present in multiple photos taken at different angles. The difference in perspective between each photo is then used to figure out coordinates of those detected features. Once enough coordinates are generated, they can then be combined into a point cloud. OpenMVS uses multi-view stereo to take that point cloud, as well as the original photos, to then densify everything into a single solid model. I really don't know how it works, so I'm just going to go with it being literal magic. The stage is set. I built a drone, figured out a way to give it positioning indoors, and then make useful models after a flight was done. Oh, and I dumped months of hard work into bridging everything together. It was time to start testing. First things first, let's see if the drone can fly. I'll let the footage speak for itself. Oh Jesus! Oh! <laughs> Well, that didn't go well. What about the positioning stuff? This seemed to work much better. My calibration phase was able to convert Orbslam's output into real-world units pretty well. Photogrammetry, on the other hand, ended up being a mixed bag. I was able to experiment with shoving photos in, then getting models back out again. But unfortunately, my final university exams started before I could actually integrate it into the final thing. This meant I didn't really get to finish the project. The drone couldn't map anything. Though it couldn't actually fly very well, so that was a much bigger problem. So, what went wrong? Well, it'd be better to say what went right. I'd spec the drone completely wrong. I'd chosen powerful components, but in an indoor setting? You want your drone to be slow and lightweight, so that when you inevitably crash into something, you don't damage anything. Oh, and I'd install the motors of the drone completely wrong. <laughs> it also turns out that if you try to run video streaming, a full wireless hotspot, and RG Pilot together on the same Pi Zero, it really doesn't like it. Everything ran so slowly that there was a good five second lag when trying to control the drone manually. Basically, it wasn't safe. At all. If you want to read the original paper that I wrote after all of this work, I've included a link to it in the description below. By this point though, my university time was coming to an end. So, I packed away the drone. Three years passed. It's now early 2021. I was on Reddit, as per usual, and I came across a post from an old uni friend. Oh, no way! So I reached out. The conversation that ended up turning to how the drone project was going. But what could I say? It was stuck in a box? No, that couldn't do. It got my brain going. I had to get it flying again. For real this time. First things first, the motors. So apparently, I had actually tried to fix them before. 
but I'd managed to strip the screws, and I must have just given up. Well, anyway, out came the hacksaw. Hardware problem number two. The Raspberry Pi was really poorly mounted. I ordered a slim case for it off eBay, and remounted it in a much better position on the chassis. Oh, and I used some foam padding for some simple vibration protection. Next, I had a look at the software. I stripped out the video streaming, which massively freed up system resources for flight software. Input lag went from 5 seconds to unnoticeable. Why didn't I try this before? I also stole the camera hardware and reused that in another project. It also turned out I'd never properly calibrated RG Pilot. Which I guess is why the drone liked to fly sideways. With all those fixes done, version 2 was finally ready for testing. I think I'm done for the week. <laughs> Crap. I was so close to it flying, and I wasn't about to let some pesky crashes get in my way. So I bought some new propellers and went out again. Now that is looking proper cool. I love it. Let's try this. Three years ago, I wouldn't have believed I'd ever have that flying like that. And here we go. I am not stopping here. This drone is going to be able to fly around by itself, then follow me with the power of AI. It's going to be a long road of experimentation, but I think now that I'm older, but not necessarily wiser, that I can pull this off. So stay tuned, because this is just part one. A massive thank you goes out to Dr. Steve Bagley and Dr. Mike Pound, who both supervise this project whilst I'm still at university. They've made some excellent videos in collaboration with the Computer File channel, which I highly recommend going and checking out. Also, another thank you goes to you for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.